who's waiting for a good old damn brown book? Well, that person's me. Hello, fellow book questers. It is I, Aaron, the book quester. Today, I have this awesome damn brown book for you guys. And the, it, the, it is the lost symbol by Dan Brown himself. This is book two in the Robert Langdon, and uh, book three in the Robert Langdon series. Its former being the Da Vinci Code, and it, and after that, you know, you know, it's Inferno. And I'm really, I'm really reading this Robert Langdon series in reverse order because I read Inferno first, then I read the Da Vinci Code, then the Angels and Demons, then this book. So, mm, you know, and if we jump right in. This time, Robert Langdon's beloved mentor, Peter Solomon. He is a high-ranking mason, and he calls Robert Langdon to Washington, D.C. in order for him to do a lecture. I mean, it's totally out of the blue, but since Peter Solomon is an old friend and a mentor for Robert Langdon, he goes to Washington, D.C. right away. When he gets there, he finds that there is no lecture. And he's like, what? And then he finds something horrible. He finds a hand. A hand that he recognizes as Peter Solomon's. And it is making a sign. A very ancient sign of greeting. A sign that was saying that you are worthy of the ancient mysteries. Meanwhile, the battle, the, it's very creepy, and meanwhile, the, he finds out that Robert Langdon has been kidnapped, I mean, Peter Solomon has been kidnapped by a very evil man with a sinister purpose. And now, they need to find the lost pyramid of the Brotherhood of Masons. That is what the evil kidnapper wants. And then, after that, he says, he will let Peter go. And Robert Langdon is shoved into a quest to find what he thought did not even exist. The ancient Masonic Pyramid that is said to have all the wisdom of the ages within it. Wisdom that humanity itself has forgotten. And meanwhile, the director of the sea. CIA saying that this is a matter of national security and that she would do her she grabbed Robert Langdon and she is making them break into one of one of Washington DC's most safeguard vaults and well Lang Mr. Langdon is probably very confused I mean every single one of his adventures starts with Either a mysterious phone call, which leads to a horrific murder scene or something really horrible. Then it leads to an uh, adventure that some uh, that most of the time includes running from the law. And then it's like, the law is actually not running after you. It's just that you're running away from us and we're not trying to catch you. Which is very complicated. And really, you can see the twists coming. Some of them. And... What's really interesting about this book is that every single one of the Dan Brown books that I've read so far has had a different woman that Robert Langdon falls in love with. Let's be honest here, every single one of them had a woman that Langdon fell in love with. But in this book, there was no woman, and well, that was really a really for me, in my opinion. And it is a really big adventure. And really, the twists are starting to make sense to me because of the normal pattern that most of the Dan Brown books flow. But it, some of them is not, you can't see them coming. And it is a pretty great book. And personally, I love the way that Dan Brown puts all that ancient history and things that we don't know about you as Washington, D.C. symbols hidden in the very... Act very cornerstone of Washington, D.C. And it's a great book, 
And every time I read Dan Brown's book, I think, I think I mentioned this before. How much research did he have to do to write this one book? Only time will tell. And like always, your book quester and the book quester. Great book, guys. I must read them. Guys, I literally read Inheritance like like yesterday after reading this book. And even though this is a great book, sometimes a good old fantasy book is what you need. Although this is a like like a like a page turner, like a like a legit page turner.